Hello listeners, and welcome back to Sandman Stories Presents. Today we are moving on to the second story of the Louisiana Folktales book. This one involves a young boy named Jean Malin, which means Clever John. He has an adopted mother that he wants to protect from Mr. Bovine, who is really a bull, but can only do so with the help of Brother Rabbit's magic potion. Two Creole words that you might not be familiar with are langyap, meaning a little something extra, oftentimes a little something from a shop, as kind of a thank you. In Korean, we might call it service. And the second word is grigri, a type of magic or talisman that might go back to West African Muslims that spread along to the Americas when people were brought over for slavery. In some cultures, grigri is a good magic, and in others, it represents the dark arts. It is also a fantastic album by Dr. John. Okay, let's begin. Brother Bull and Jean Malin, or Clever John. When Jean Malin was small, he became an orphan, and he did not know where to go or what to do. One day he saw a rich lady who was passing in her beautiful carriage, and he asked her to take him with her. As the lady saw that he was a pretty little boy, and that he appeared to be very smart, she asked him how old he was. Jean Malin could not say, but he answered the lady that he had heard his mother say that he was born when the peach trees were in bloom the year the snow fell. The lady took him in her fine carriage to her house to be her messenger boy and to wait at table. The little fellow soon began to love the lady as if she were his mother, and he was jealous of a rich gentleman who came to court the lady every day and wished to marry her. But I must tell you that the gentleman was a bull who could change himself into a man in the daytime to come and court the lady, and in the evening he became a bull again to go and eat grass in the park. Jean Malin had noticed that when the gentleman was near his lady love, there was no bull in the prairie, and when the bull was in the prairie, there was no lover in the parlor. I will have to watch, said Jean Malin. There is something strange which I don't understand. He watched and watched, but he took good care to not let Brother Bull see him. One day, early in the morning, when Jean Malin went to get some wood to light his fire, he saw Brother Bull on his knees and sang, Bonor manjam, fat majam, jam jam jara jara. And then, all at once, the bull became a man and went to see his lady. Ah, I tell you, Jean Malin was afraid. He shivered as if he were very cold. That very morning, the lover took breakfast with the lady, and Jean Malin waited on them. He ran sometimes on one side and sometimes on the other, as a butterfly. He was so frightened. When they asked him for a plate, he gave bread on a fork, and the lady scolded him. She told him, when the lover left, that she would send him away if he did not do better, and she wanted to know what was the matter with him. I know you don't like my lover, but why? What did he do to you? He always treated you well. Well, I will tell you, mistress. I am afraid, and if you knew what I knew, you would be afraid also, and you would not let that man enter your house. What is the matter? Tell me immediately, or I shall whip you and put you out for Langyap. Jean Malin began to cry, and he said to the lady, Know then that your lover is the great bull which is in the park, and that he can change himself into a man and become a bull again to go and eat grass. The lady was very angry and wanted to beat Jean Malin, but he said, Mistress, listen to me. When your lover will come again, if I don't prove to you that all I say is true, you can send me away and do what you please with me. All right, said the lady but remember that you will pay dear for all your lies. A few days after that, the lover came. He was dressed in great style, and Jean Malin said to himself, I will see the fun today, because he knew what to say to make the lover become a bull again. While they were dining, the lady kept looking at Jean Malin to see what he would do. When the gentleman took the pretty fingers of the lady to kiss them, Jean Malin, who was pouring wine into her glass, said the words he had heard the bull utter. Well, if ever you heard a big noise, it was on that day. The hat, the trousers, the speckles, the coat, all the clothes of the gentleman fell on the floor, and he was changed into a bull in the dining room. 
He upset the table, broke the plates, the dishes, the glasses, the bottles. He broke down the glass door to escape and ran into the prairie. Well, are you satisfied? said Jean Moulin. Yes, said the lady. You render me a great service, and I shall always treat you as my son. You believe that is all? Oh, no. You will see how Jean Moulin got along with the bull, which had sworn to kill the fellow that had betrayed him. The boy was always afraid, and whenever he went out, he would look around to see if the bull was not there. One day he went to see Brother Rabbit to ask his advice and told him what a bad fix he was in. Brother Rabbit said, Listen to what I'm going to tell you. Go into the woods and look for an owl's nest. Take three eggs on a Friday at sunset and bring them to me for me to charm them. Then you will do all you want with Brother Bull. Jean Moulin found the three owl's eggs and carried them to Brother Rabbit, who made his grigri on them with the milk of a black goat and told Jean Moulin what to do. When Jean Moulin was going back to the house of his mistress, he looked around for the bull, for he felt a little anxious in spite of what Brother Rabbit had said. There was the bull, bellowing and looking furious. Come, said Jean Moulin, you will see how I am going to fix you. Brother Bull galloped straight at him, and Jean Moulin climbed up the tree, for he thought it was more prudent. In a minute, like a squirrel, he was at the top of the tree, and the bull stood underneath. Now I have you at last. You will have to come down. And he began to strike at the tree with his horns. Jean Moulin laughed at him, and the bull was so angry that he knelt down and said the words to become a man. He was immediately changed into a man with an axe in his hand. Come down. Don't let me cut the tree, or I will kill you, little rogue. Cut, brother bull. I want to see what you can do. The bull struck with his axe. Jip, jup. You might have seen the tree tremble at every blow. And Jean Moulin threw one of the owl's eggs on Brother Bull's shoulder, and his arm fell down on the ground with the axe. The man picked up the axe with the other hand, and chip, chup, on the tree. Jean Moulin threw down the second egg on the remaining arm of the man, and the arm fell to the ground. He picked up the axe with his teeth, chip, chup, again. Now, said Jean Moulin, I will finish you. He threw his third egg on the man's head, and the head fell on the ground. The arms, the legs, the head, the body of the man began to wriggle like a snake on fire. Then Jean Moulin said, I want you to become a bull again. He said the magic words, and the head and the arms jumped up to the body, and the man became a bull again and galloped away with great haste. From that time he never worried about Jean Moulin again for his grigri had not been as strong as that of Brother Rabbit. The End Ooh, that story was a ride. I like that Clever John was just looking out for his adopted mother. I also like how Brother Rabbit was a source of good in the story. As I was doing a little research, I came across a book called Reading Africa into American Literature, Epics, Fables, and Gothic Tales by Keith Cartwright, and it related this story to several features of Senegalese and Gambian folklore. It looks like a very interesting read, and I might have to pick it up once I have a spot of time to read for myself. I also came across a beautiful mess of a page that had several Creole passages translated into English, which helped me out greatly. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. Okay, and the podcast shout-out is to just the zoo of us. Married couple Ellen and Christian Weatherford are two of the kindest folks in podcasting. They recently got picked up by the Max Fun Network, and we are all so very happy for them. Every week they talk about a couple of animals, rate them on a scale of 1 to 10 in three categories, and explain how the animals work. Sometimes Ellen is on her own and talks with experts in their fields, and it's really just a fun podcast where you can learn about animals all day long. And did I mention how nice these folks are? And if you like their podcast as much as I do, go and give them a rating and a review on Podchaser, iTunes, Spotify, or Good Pods. 
And the listener shout out is to Nairobi, Kenya, whose name comes from the Maasai phrase meaning cool water. It is also called the safari capital of the world. There are a lot of people with different backgrounds in the city, due in part to the British bringing in workers from other parts of the British colonial empire. There are also immigrants from Somalia and Sudan that make up a sizable portion of the population. From Nairobi, you can go out and visit different national parks and see a variety of wildlife outside of a zoo setting. It looks absolutely beautiful, and I hope to visit someday. Because the national language of Kenya is Swahili, I will attempt my sign-off in that language. Apologies if I mess this up. Asante na usiku muema. Thank you, and good night.